that kind of game. Awesome! Hey everybody, Jim here. Welcome back to 16-Bit Anime, a series where we take a look back at 16-bit games based on some of the most popular anime and manga of the 90s. And today we're kicking things off with a game based on one of my personal favorite anime series, and that's Yu Yu Hakusho Makyo Toitsusen for the Sega Mega Drive. This is a 1994 release, and it's one of the first handful of games to be developed by Treasure. A developer that obviously has a lot of great titles under their belt, so it was intriguing to see what they could do with a property like this. As you can see, this is a 2D fighter, and in many ways, it's a fairly traditional one. It features 11 playable characters and sticks to the tried and true 16-bit fighting structure, giving each character an array of normal and special attacks executed in the same way as pretty much any other 2D fighter. Though the controls are a bit different with only two attack buttons, as well as buttons mapped to blocking and dashing, plus a couple of other functions. So if you want to play this one, you'll be needing a six button controller. And as a 2D fighter, it's pretty damn good. The gameplay is fast, the controls are responsive, and there's a good variety of characters. This is a treasure game though, so as you might expect, there are some interesting variations to the gameplay. For starters, you can jump back and forth between the foreground and the background, much like the first handful of Fatal Fury games, and this adds an extra layer of depth to the gameplay. But the real fun of Makyo Toitsusen comes in the form of its four-player mode, which, as you can imagine, gets pretty insane. You have a couple of options for how to play, including two-on-two -two battles and my personal favorite, the Battle Royale, where it's every man, woman, and demon for himself. Fists fly and energy blasts are fired at will as you try to be the last to survive, and this is a lot of fun. The single player mode is honestly just okay in my opinion. I wouldn't play it before games like Street Fighter 2 or Killer Instinct for example, but the inclusion of the four player mode is what really sells this game. It's a unique and fun fighting experience, and coupled with the nice graphics and sound design and good use of the license, is what makes this one worth playing. It's a rather rare and expensive game on the Japanese Mega Drive, but it was recently included in the Mega Drive Mini, which is a much more economical option for those of you that might want to give it a try. Yu Yu Hakusho Makyo Toitsusen is pretty damn cool. I don't care if she's a girl or a baby or somebody's grandmother. I'll still knock her out. For our next game, I wanted to go with something a bit more obscure, and that's 1990's Cyber City Oedo 808 for the PC Engine CD. I was honestly kind of shocked when I found out there was a game based on Cyber City, as it was an OVA that wasn't particularly well known when it was first released, and only consisted of three parts. If you've never heard of it, it's a highly stylized and violent cyberpunk anime set in the year 2808, and features three cyber criminals turned police officers who have a limited amount of time to solve crimes, or else have their head blown off by an explosive collar. It was designed and directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who worked on a lot of my favorite anime from the 80s and 90s, including Demon City Shinjuku, Ninja Scroll, and Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust. So if you haven't seen it yet, put Cyber City on your watch list. Anyway, the game pretty much mirrors the plot of the anime and consists of various cases that need to be investigated and seen through to their conclusion. So you'll be walking around various areas of the city, exploring locations, and gathering information from lots of NPCs. Think about a game like Snatcher, and it's kind of like that. Very text-heavy and includes a lot of voice work from the cast of the anime. It's pretty cool if you're a fan of the source material, as it's basically just a continuation of the story. As a fan myself, it is great to go on more adventures with these characters, but if you're not a fan, you might not care. 
Also, as far as I know, there's no fan translation of this game or even one in the works, so I don't know. Maybe just use Google Translate on your phone and kinda wing it. The most disappointing thing though is that I was hoping for some action shooting sequences, again in the same vein as Snatcher. But alas, there were none, even though the anime definitely doesn't skimp on the action. This game does do its best to maintain the look and tone of the OVA though, which is very much appreciated. The cyberpunk aesthetic is strong with this one, and there's plenty of blood and violence. If you've ever seen a Yoshiaki Kawajiri anime, you know you can't do without that. This is also a pretty decent looking game all things considered. The characters and backgrounds are all fairly detailed, and there's even a bit of animation here and there which is nice. And the sound design is pretty good too, even though the soundtrack isn't very robust. The bottom line though, if you're a fan of Cyber City and always wish there was a video game based on it, this is, as far as I know, the only game in town. So take a few Japanese lessons and jump right in, because Cyber City is awesome. You can call me old fashioned, but I still believe in the death sentence. Next up, let's take a look at not just a game, but a series of games, and that is the Go Go Akman trilogy on the Super Famicom. If you've never heard of this series, that's probably because 1. It was never very well known outside of Japan, despite the fact that it was authored and illustrated by Akira Toriyama at a time when Dragon Ball Z was conquering the world. And 2. This was a very short-lived series of manga and an even shorter-lived anime. The plot of the series and the game centers around the titular character of Akman, a 200-year-old demon child tasked with the harvesting of souls for the King of Hell. All while being opposed by the forces of heaven and various earthly forces such as the military. He's followed by a demonic helper demon named Godon who happily scoops up souls into his jar. And all three games play more or less the same with various little tweaks between each one. They're all action platformers and feature Akman going through various environments defeating enemies, harvesting souls, and taking on a whole host of boss battles against anything from angels and strippers to martial arts masters and giant robots. You have basic attacks in the form of punching in the first game and sword slashing in the sequels, and you can pick up a ton of different weapons that are supremely useful for harvesting souls. A sword works fine of course, but machine guns and rocket launchers work much better. Also, depending on the game, you do get the chance to play as other characters. In particular, the third game features Akman teaming up with his longtime rival, the little angel known as Tenchikun, who has some unique abilities of his own. In addition to platforming, these games offer up a variety of other gameplay styles as well. Most commonly, some auto-scrolling segments that play like a shoot 'em up and reticle shooting segments which are good fun and inject a bit of variety into these otherwise fairly formulaic platformers. They're fun games for sure and each does bring something unique to the table, but they are made just that much more enjoyable by the great visuals and decent sound design. The graphics replicate the anime pretty well and feature some rather comical cutscenes and the music that you'll be playing to is enjoyable as well. So these are solid games all the way around and I definitely recommend giving them a try if you enjoy 16-bit platformers. They've never been released on any other platforms, so if you can't get your hands on these Super Famicom cartridges, all three game ROMs have been translated and are easy to find. <laughs> Next up, I felt like this video could use a few exploding heads, so let's take a look at Hokuto no Ken Seikimatsu Kyuseishu Densetsu for the Sega Mega Drive, and that's a mouthful. This is a 1989 release that was both developed and published by Sega, surprisingly enough, and if it looks familiar to you, you may have played its North American counterpart referred to as Last Battle, which itself was a launch title for the Sega Genesis. But of course, this version is leaps and bounds better. Why? Blood. Lots and lots of blood. Anyone who's ever seen Hokuto no Ken aka Fist of the North Star will tell you that the most memorable things about it are the awesome intro song, the epic one-liners, 
and the sheer brutality as Kenshiro annihilates legions of bad guys, using his martial arts skills to turn them into quivering masses of blood-soaked gore. So it should be a crime to release a game based on the series that doesn't feature heads exploding and corporeal forms being ripped asunder. Anyway, blood and guts aside, the gameplay in Hokuto no Ken is extremely simple, and at first is pretty damn tough, mostly due to how slowly you move and how stiff your attacks are. It's a beat-em-up, so to speak, but it's strictly a side-scroller and also includes a bit of platforming. Similar to a game like Ninja Warriors, every enemy can be taken out with a single hit, thus exploding into a fine red mist, with boss characters taking a bit more abuse before they go down. As you take out enemies and clear levels, you slowly but surely increase your power level and at certain milestones, your attack speed and range improve, and for the most part you have your choice of what path you'll take through the game. The stages you choose to play through are pretty important though, as at the end of some of them you encounter allies that can help you in various ways, such as granting you power boosts and replenishing your health. I remarked earlier that it's kind of surprising that this game was developed and published by Sega, and that's because it's not very good. It's a fairly slow and clunky game with graphics and sound that even at the time felt to impress. Hokuto no Ken is a license that I think would have benefited from having a gameplay style more closely resembling Golden Axe. But instead we got this weird side-scroller slash beat-em-up hybrid. Oddly enough though, every other 16-bit game based on the series is way worse than this one. So if you're a Sega fan and you have a hankering for some exploding heads, and you don't have access to House of the Dead, Hokuto no Ken will do just fine. Finally, to cap things off, let's take a look at something a bit more juvenile with Crayon Shin-chan Arashi o Yobu Inji on the Super Famicom. Originally released in 1993 and developed by Sims, it's based on the Shin-chan series, which if you've never seen or heard of it, is an anime about a kid named Shinosuke and all of his crazy antics. Kind of like Dennis the Menace, but way more crude, including lots of scatological humor and Shin-chan himself being very prone to dropping his pants at the drop of a hat. Anyway, this has been a very popular property for decades now, especially with small children. So it makes sense that a bunch of Shin-chan games have been made, but this is the only one that I've actually ever played. The premise is very simple, as you might expect from a game that was targeted at a younger audience. Essentially, the game is split into two different segments, with the bulk of the gameplay being dedicated to exploring and platforming. In each stage, you'll be tasked with finding various cards scattered around the area and ultimately finding a gold card to exit the stage, or occasionally just finding an exit door, and some of the cards grant you certain abilities to help you along on your journey. There are enemies to contend with, so to speak, mostly just the other kids in the neighborhood who will cause damage if you collide with them but you can jump on their heads to briefly take them out of commission. The rest of the gameplay is dedicated to various mini-games, and again, these are all extremely simple, including a bit of rock-paper-scissors, some slot machines, a match game, a picture puzzle, and a game where you have to select cards that start with a certain sound as shown in Hiragana. Not terribly exciting stuff for an adult, but for a five-year-old, I'm sure this was the peak of great gameplay at the time. So this is a cute little game that doesn't really offer any kind of a challenge, it's more of a leisurely playthrough, but it is quite enjoyable if you just want to chill out for a bit. And I must say that this is a pretty damn good looking game, or at least it accurately replicates the look of the anime and it features some decent sound design including some excellent voice samples from the cast of the show. If you're looking for something to put your gaming skills to the test, this won't be that game. But if you just want some good, clean, ridiculous fun, and maybe a couple of laughs, Crayon Shinchan has got you covered. Yo! Time to go! So there you go, everybody. Those are some more games based on the anime of the 90s, the stuff mostly that I grew up with. Uh, so let me know down in the comments, have you played any of these games and what did you think of them? And what are some other 16-bit games 
based on popular anime that I should check out and perhaps feature in a future episode. I'd love to hear from you, so leave it all down there in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, everybody. Goodbye.